Hey guys, how's it going? It's Duncan here, and welcome back to the Overwatch League Roundup. And my top three teams that have declined the most in 2019, or got worse, whatever you want to say. Now, I just want to make some apologies at the start of this video. I am a bit off colour. Um, the This video is coming up very late in the day compared to my usual upload schedule. That is because um, normally I would record these videos the day before they go out. Unfortunately, yesterday... I got admitted to hospital and I spent the night in hospital so I couldn't record anything and I was in no fit state to anyway uh, but I'm back at home now so I'm recording this video on the day it's going out in the afternoon so yeah I'm gonna get it out and um, also this means that new mic has not been set up yet so obviously I'm still using the old microphone that I, uh, I teased a change of microphone in the last video it will come it's just uh, I haven't had time to set it up on that. But without further ado, should we get into this? Right. Now, the top three teams that have got worse in 2019 is an interesting one and actually quite an easy one for me to, to do compared to the previous video, which was the teams that have improved the most because the third place was a bit of a difficult one to call on that one. But this one, in my eyes, there are three teams that really, really stand out as getting worse. Now, obviously, we're comparing 2019 to the inaugural season, so... As with the previous video, there are eight teams that can't be included in this. That's the Vancouver Titans, Hangzhou Spark, Atlanta Rain, Guangzhou Charge, the Chengdu Hunters, the Paris Eternal, the Toronto Defiant, the Washington Justice, because obviously they didn't exist in the inaugural season. It gives us 12 teams to choose from. So, at number three, I'm going to put the Houston Outlaws. Now, some of this is out of the Houston Outlaws' control, mind you because obviously they had a lot of problems with their parent company Optic and that has now been sorted and hopefully they can get back to winning, or I say winning ways, I say uh, better ways in this coming 2020 season. But it doesn't take away from the fact that Houston Outlaws in the inaugural season had a positive record. They went 22-18 and 18, if you remember that they had 40 games in the inaugural season and they were only one place outside of the playoff places, missing out to the Philadelphia Fusion, who would eventually be finalists. So, Houston actually were a fairly decent team in the inaugural season, but this season has seen a massive decline, and they were lower than 16th, which is where they finished for a lot of the season anyway. They were bottom at one point, and this was because of some of the ch changes and problems in the back room for the Houston Outlaws. So, it's kind of harsh, uh, it's kind of out of the player's control, but it's still a decline, and hopefully Houston are going to get themselves through it, because the other two people on this list, I don't think are going to get themselves through it, looking at what they've done so far, but Houston, it's looking bright, it really is looking bright, and to be quite honest, you know, if, if if the problems with Optic hadn't have happened, you probably wouldn't be on this list because you would have done better. So, honestly, the future's looking bright for Houston Outlaws fans, and I wouldn't be too worried about this going into the 2020 season. So, at number two, I have the Los Angeles Valiant. Now, Valiant were a very good team in the inaugural season. They came second in the overall standings, and they were a, a really good team. They had stage titles... And they did decently in the playoffs, but not massively, massively well. But that Valiant team changed. They lost soon to the Paris Eternal when the Paris Eternal became a team in the league. And they never seemed to replace the players they lost with good enough players, if you saw what I mean. And it led to a 13th placed finish in the league in the 2019 season. And so, yeah, a decline uh, is quite obvious here. And the problem with the Valiant is, uh, yeah, it, they don't seem to have arrested that decline. If anything, looking at the transfers they've made in, in, in the offseason, it looks like they could decline further. And this is worrying from a Los Angeles Valiant point of view. Remember that the Los Angeles Valiant were, were a big, big team during these two seasons because, you know, they had home advantage and things like that, along with the Gladiators, obviously. But they've been constantly outdone by the Gladiators in 2019 compared to in the inaugural season where they could outdo the Gladiators. And 
Yeah, it's 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 disappointing from a Valiant point of view, and I really thought they would make a lot of changes in in the off season to try and counteract this decline that they've been having, but I don't see it. I don't see it happening. But Valiant are my number two because there was only one team I could put at number one. This is the Boston Uprising. Now, Boston Uprising were a surprise package in the inaugural season. No one expected them to do very well, but they did amazingly for for a team that was expected to be near the bottom of the league they finished third they were they had they were the first team to go unbeaten in the stage in stage three of the inaugural season and it, it it was just amazing i mean they also came through problems like dream casper but we won't get into that and the boston uprising were looking so darn good and then we come into 2019 and yeah 19th that's uh that's not good that is not not good and given if there was more time in the season the florida mayhem who were 20th i think would have caught the boston uprising there were only two losses but uh, two games between them at that point so yeah the boston uprising is is not good and again it's a team that doesn't look to be solving their problems uh there's been some decent signings, but I don't see signings that are going to propel them up the league. And I think the main cause for this, I mean, people will say they, they lost striker, they lost, well, Dream Casper was a good player until what happened happened. And I don't know whether I could, you can ever call him a good player for what happened. Um, but they, they've also lost Gamsu. They had a really incredible tank line in the inaugural season. But I think the biggest loss for the Boston Uprising is Krusty. Krusty, the coach that went to the San Francisco Shock. And look where the San Francisco Shock ended up. Krusty is, in my opinion, possibly the best coach in the league. Just because of what he seems to do to the teams that he goes to. He led this Boston Uprising team to what they did in the inaugural season. It was incredible. And, yeah, they missed out on the stage title in their, in their unbeaten stage to the New York Excelsior, I believe. But it was still a massive feat for a team that was not expected to do really anything during that season. And then Krusty moves to the San Francisco Shock. Things start to go downhill at the Boston Uprising. And the San Francisco Shock kind of coincided with uh, a change in a lot of their players or Super and Sinatra becoming of age. And the Shock shoot up the league. Absolutely shoot up the league. And now Krusty has a league winner's medal. So, yeah. It's an interesting one, and it seems to have gone downhill at Boston Uprising ever since they lost Krusty, and they've never replaced him with any with anything that's worked. And then, for some reason, we always get these rumours of problems in the back room with the Boston Uprising. Even in the inaugural season when they were doing well, we were getting rumours of that. So, Boston Uprising is a funny, funny team. And for some reason, they never seem to sort it out. And going into 2020... I honestly think they could be the worst team in the league. Looking at the changes that the likes of Toronto, Washington, Florida, Houston, even Dallas maybe, have made, Boston don't look like they can keep up. And if you don't keep up, you get left behind. I think we're looking at a team that is only going down. So Boston have got a lot of work to do if they're going to keep up with the rest of the league. But they are my most declined team for 2019. There are some honourable mentions. Obviously, you could look at the two finalists from the inaugural season. That's the London Spitfire and the Philadelphia Fusion. They didn't do nowhere near as well as they did in the inaugural season. But remember, London Spitfire and Philadelphia Fusion finished 5th and 6th in the inaugural season and went on to win the grand final. They finished 7th and 10th this season. So Spitfire... They finished outside the automatic playoff places, but it's not a massive, massive decline. It is a de massive decline in win-loss ratio, but it's not a massive decline compared to the likes of the the teams I've already talked about. But uh, the Philadelphia Fusion, they would definitely come in at fourth for me, and I think London would be fifth. Uh, Philadelphia Fusion, I think, have been disappointing and not lived up to what they could be this season. But I think that's mainly due to meta. Simply because... In the inaugural season, we got to see Carpe on on really impactful hitscan players. 
uh, hit scan heroes like McCree and Widowmaker. We all know Carpe's Widowmaker from the inaugural season. And that has not been a factor this season due to GOATS and due to Arisa Sigma and the likes of those metas, which haven't allowed incredible hit scan plays to really take place. And I think London Spitfire also fall into this hole because London Spitfire. They were very good in the metas in the inaugural season where roll lock wasn't a thing. 222 wasn't a thing. Uh, Dive was really good at the start of the inaugural season. And then we saw more interesting like triple tank or not triple tankers in goats, but triple tank single support and uh, stuff like that. Or triple DPS and single support. And London were kind of doing well on these comps as well. It's what they won the league with. They couldn't do this in 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 2019 season because Goats was heavily meta when we went into the season, and as soon as Goats basically went, it was triple two, and London never adjusted. I think that's a coaching problem at the London Spitfire, and I think honestly the coaching problem at the London Spitfire has been fixed. Did they need to get rid of all those players? I don't think so, but we will see what happens with London because they're the most unpredictable team in the league right now, in my opinion. But that's enough about London. My top three are the Boston Uprising, the Valiant, and the Houston Outlaws. I think they've declined the most. I think one of them has a very bright future in the Houston Outlaws. The other two have got work to do. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.